I'm Jay Kingley, co-founder and CEO of Maven, your host of Fractionals Unplugged. I'm joined today by Karina Mahili, the Muse founder and leader of Fractionals United, which is a free community for current and aspiring fractionals to connect, collaborate, and learn from each other. Fractionals United is open to all fractionals. It's just hit the one-year anniversary, and it already has 6,500 members. Karina is based in Brooklyn, New York. Welcome, Karina. Thank you for having me. Welcome to Fractionals Unplugged, an insider's perspective vodcast and podcast from Maven. We work with fractional executives to recreate their corporate income without the insane hours, building the business they want on their own terms. Jay Kingley, the co-founder and CEO of Maven, shares best practices along with tips and tricks on how you can build a robust pipeline to become fully booked with clients, start getting paid what you're worth, and eliminate your brute force marketing. Enjoy today's episode. Karina, let's say I've had a 30-year career in operations with my last two years serving as the COO of a $250 million specialty chemical company. I left corporate six months ago, and I'm focused on establishing myself as a fractional COO. I reach out to you because other fractionals I know recommended Fractionals United is the go-to community. Now, you've got a maximum of 60 seconds to tell me what it's all about Go! So Fractionals United is a free community for all current and aspiring fractional leaders. I created as a fractional COO because I needed it. And it's all about connection, collaborating, and learning from each other. What motivated you to start Fractionals United? So I had gone uh, full-time with one of my fractional clients. And as often happens with small businesses, once I got the people and systems in place, uh, they no longer needed a full-time COO. So I came back to Fractional in the beginning of 2023 and discovered it was very different than two years ago. On the one hand, it's way more popular. People are writing about it, talking about it. There seems to be a growing trend, but it felt so much harder and lonelier than two years ago. So I started looking for my tribe. I had joined a bunch of great online operations communities in the last two years, so I knew the power of community. And when I couldn't quite find what I was looking for, I decided to see if maybe there was interest, and lo and behold, there was. One of the things that I have experienced and I have seen in so many others is most fractionals come out of corporate. They have had 20, 25, 30 years plus minus on each end of a corporate career. What people take for granted is that at work, there is community. There are people that you engage with and interact with. The thing that surprises people the most, I think, when they go solo is how lonely it is. And that is something they're not used to. And I think that the, the benefit of community such as yours, it hits at this issue, which, by the way, a lot of people don't like to talk about because <laughs> I think there's still this little stigma of an experienced, say, 50 plus year old former corporate executive having to admit that they're lonely. It, how does that match up with what you've seen and experienced? Absolutely. And fractional is this weird thing where like we're not consultants and we're not full-time employees yet we're embedded in the team so you would think that you don't need community but you're not quite a full-time employee and most of us work remotely so there is no water cooler or lunchroom breaks so I think it's so important like oh my gosh I've gained as much from this community as any of my members because yes it's like we do this weird thing and we need, like, you're not going to ask a freelancer or consultant questions on how to be a fractional. You're not going to ask a full timer. Like you need other fractionals to be able to talk about all the things that go into being fractional, whether it's the functional or the business side. So absolutely. You know, a- another point that comes out of what you say that I, I think is worth commenting on is while a fractional is of the organization, 
right? They are there in a part-time, from the organization's point of view, part-time right. leadership right. capacity. This is not where they're putting all their professional chips. So the big difference, and I think for a client, this is a massive advantage to bring in a fractional. And it's the P word, politics, right? Every person who's full-time in an organization will play the political game. Whether they want to or not, they have to play politics. But truly, a fractional doesn't have to play because their long-term isn't with this client. Um, and so I think it's, you know, the, so on one hand, you say, that's great because I don't know a lot of people except for professional politicians that love playing politics. But on the other side, it's that political discourse that really facilitates so much engagement and communication, the water cooler conversations, which a fractional, because they're not part of the politics, isn't going to be part of. So uh, the community is really how the fractional gets that engagement. Yeah. Yeah. Back to the um, the politics uh, point. So back in the early days of the community, we had an interesting conversation. Many of us have gone back and forth between full-time and fractional. You know, just like me, I'm not the only one. And in retrospect, we've noticed, and I didn't realize this till I start, I don't even remember if I was the one who started the conversation in the community, but several of us have seen that when we go W2, there is this subtle change in how we're treated. Mm -hmm. It's as if they know as a fractional, they don't own us. So they treat us as a true peer and partner. But once we go full time, we're just an employee which is so bizarre and I don't think it's conscious, but it's, but it, it was a really interesting conversation we had and I totally see it. It's bizarre. Yeah. The thing that uh, people don't really talk about is politics and how fractionals don't play that political game that they would the minute they are now W2. And, it, and I think that's part of why the treatment is different. All right. So We've talked about the community. You, you've been dancing around some of the value, but take me through the benefits I would get as a fractional for becoming part of your community. So the main one is a fully supportive and engaged community of fractional leaders uh, across all functions and, you know, global. And we have, we have several, it's in Slack. We have channels for discussions, for resources, for asking for help, for functions, for locations. We have many events, um, both social and educational, uh, many member hosted lunch and learns, as well as some sponsored events and webinars. We have a resource hub, which is both a member directory where you can easily look up other members in niches or functions or locations so you can connect because it's all about that. Plus other resources, all our events, uh, educational events are recorded so you can go back. And it's, it's a constantly building hub of resources. We also have some partners who offer benefits because we're all 1099. So both in the US and non-US, if you need benefits. And I'm always, you know, paying attention to what the community needs and, and other ways that, you know, we can provide value. Now, there are a lot of communities out there that fractionals can join. Well, I don't know if there are many that are your size, mm -hmm. at least I've run into. Um, and uh, But clearly there are new ones that pop up seemingly every day. So what makes Fractionals United different from all these other communities that are out? A couple of things. First off, we are the largest currently. So if you want to be where a good percentage of the other fractionals already are, then you want to join us. Two, I've committed that it's going to stay free. So, you know, I may ask for small recurring donations and we're, we're going to monetize other ways, but the community itself is going to be free. And three, I focus on community. I'm willing to 
like I am partnering with others in the ecosystem, but my primary focus is community and making this the best community for fractionals. Fabulous. Now, given that you engage with so many fractional executives, can you share your perspective on the biggest challenges facing fractionals today? Finding the work. As much as fractional seems to be on the upswing, a tiny percentage of the people who could use us know we exist. So it is still so challenging to find the work. And unless you're someone who is naturally inclined to network and you're a people person and you're always doing business development, it's going to be hard. And like you said, many of us come from full time or corporate or like mm-hmm. we're not, you know, we're not BD people. We're not salespeople, you know, so it's so hard, A, to find the work, B, when you have the work to juggle doing the work plus keeping a pipeline. Um, yeah, that is the number one challenge. And someday I hope, I believe it will change because I do believe this is on the upswing and, and like you said, so advantageous to so many SMBs and startups and scale-ups. There will be a point where it's easier, much easier, if not easiest, you know, but we're so far from there, unfortunately. Well, that is the same message that I hear. And in, in, in fact, as you know, that's yeah. <laughs> why Maven exists is to help solve that problem. But what I would share is just a, a thought to our audience. I, I talk to a lot of people that bemoan the fact that the term fractional is not yet part of the standard business lingo. And, uh, and I agree with that. And it would be easier if on the client side, people say, you know what I need? I need a fraction. And, yep. and that word is top of mind, tip of their tongue. But I would also say that's an excuse and you need to move past it because you need to be thinking about what value you deliver. Who cares what it's called and articulate that value proposition? Because those companies that need a fractional, but don't know about a fractional, They will understand when you are speaking and sharing your insight and your wisdom and your expertise around their issues. They will say, I need some of that. Even if I don't know what you call that, I need it. And I I would encourage everybody to not sit back and wait, although it will inevitably happen where the word, you know, will, will become widely adopted and say, don't let that stop you, right? Talk about the value that you give. Now, if that's my advice to fractional executives, what would your advice be? I agree. Like, I I do think words are important just because if we use it, um, it's Mm -hmm. a short, right? It's a lot easier to explain what what your value prop is if people understand it. I used to have to explain to people years ago, um, no one goes into business to run a business. So as soon as a founder has any product market fit or a modicum of success, they get overwhelmed with the day-to-day and hire someone like me. It's so much easier to just say fractional COO than that whole, you know, long story. Indeed. So there is a benefit, but yes, obviously it's not, it should not be, you know, it's not a reason to not move ahead. My advice is just join communities, make connections. And we actually had a really great um, lunch and learn from someone in the community. And his point is that you don't want to be networking with your end clients. You want to network with other service providers. So the other fractionals, right? So a CMO should network with a COO or CFO, you know, someone else who's already in your target market Mm -hmm. And make relationships with them so that they think of you and bring you in because they've already explained, they're already there, you know, so it's not, it's, it's a lot easier than cold calling or cold selling or whatever the equipment is. So being in a community with others who are already in your target market is the best way forward. Great advice. Now, what have you learned from Fractionals United that you didn't know when you started out? Community is a very different kind of business than any other business. 
How, how so, Karina? On the one hand, um, I have way more bosses than most people do because you have to pay attention. Like a community is nothing without its members. So there is this fine line between giving members what they want, but also saying no and, and, and figuring out a fine line and how to do it. And like I had been, this is my first time as a founder. Like I'm usually the integrator and COO, not the founder visionary. So it's been a really interesting experience. You know, some parts I like, some parts are hard. And now I appreciate my CEOs a lot more. Awesome. Now, I've said it, you said it, but I want you to say it another time, okay. which is what does it cost to be a member? Zero. It's free. Okay. Everyone hear that? You would be insane not to, at a minimum, check out the community. But I can tell you, this is a, a fabulous organization and, and don't just check it out, but get enmeshed and take advantage of everything that it has to offer. All right, so we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to learn a bit about Karina. As a fractional executive, you work with us to help you recreate your corporate income without working the insane hours. Our fractional flywheel service focuses on how to price, package, and position your years of experience and expertise, create and refine your go-to-market strategy so it's effective and efficient, and then nail your execution. Working with us, you will build a robust pipeline to become fully booked, start getting paid what you're worth, and eliminate your brute force marketing. Maven's unique fractional catalyst service for those serving startups and early stage companies gets you acting like a venture capitalist in managing your business and as an entrepreneur when working with your clients. Achieve financial security and reward with clients who want you to take charge, ask for forgiveness, not permission, in an environment without all the politics and bureaucracy you find in corporate. Email j.kingley at referabilitymaven.com to learn more. Welcome back. We're talking to, to Karina Mahili, the founder and leader of Fractionals United, a community for current and aspiring fractionals to connect, collaborate, and learn from each other. Karina, let's find out a bit more about you. And I want to start with the good side. What's your biggest professional accomplishment? Well, now I'd have to say the community. The fact that it has grown from zero to 6,500 in a year is something I'm proud of. You should be. I, I think that's phenomenal. And so many others are struggling to even get to three digits and in more than a year. So I, I you know, my hat is off <laughs> to you. Right. But I now got to look at the other side of that question. So now I want to understand what's your biggest professional failure, but more than the failure, I want to know, what did you learn from it and how did it shape what you do today? So I, there have been a few, like, you know, I'm not a spring chicken. I, the, the most recent one is, um, it was a, a engagement where I thought I had a great relationship with the CEO. And it unfortunately changed and I wasn't paying attention. I was too focused on the work and I lost sight of that she had her own agenda and like, you know, concerns and that that was, that should always be part of my work, right? The relationship you can, like, even if you're doing, like, we all think as long as you do a good job, it speaks for itself. But the CEO is so busy in her little, you know, place that she doesn't always pay attention, right? So part of the job, I think, of every leader, you have to keep managing up, managing sideways and down. You know, you cannot, you can never forget that the communication, like you need to, you need to tell them, right? You need to explain, you need to check in just as much as like, I do that very well with my team, but I need to do that as, as well with the CEO. Yeah, that, that's a brilliant takeaway. I mean, communication and relationship is at yeah. the core of what it is to be human. We are social beings. We're not solitary beings. So yeah. that's a great lesson to pass on. So what's next for you and Fractionals United over the coming 12 months? 
So I'm hoping that 2024 is the year that I figure out how to monetize this and not at the expense of the community. The community is going to stay free. I have a great um, head of partnership, Will, who is helping bring in sponsored sponsors and partners and, and other ways for us to monetize. I will continue to bring in more fractionals, figure out different ways to add value. I'm also part of a conversation, um, actually two different conversations. So one, uh, we had the first ever fractional conference this past year, which was headed up by uh, John Arms and Voyagers U. So Fractionals United will be um, more active in these future conferences. So there's conversations about that and what that partnership looks like. I am also fortunate that I have other um, fractional organization leaders in my community. So we're having a larger conversation about maybe a fractional professional association and lobbying and just spreading awareness together. So that's happening. So just you know, the, the way I see it is like Fractionals United is the community at the center of a larger ecosystem. And I want to focus on community, even, you know, yes, I'm free, so I have limited resources, so I have to focus. But even if I had unlimited resources, as an operator, I know it's important to focus. So my focus is community, and I want to partner with others serving the fractional ecosystem. And I think that's that's my purpose, right, is to to provide this community, to provide this hub, and then, you know, find the spokes to help fractionals. Just as a, a quick reminder to our audience, a couple of episodes ago, we had John Arms on, and he talked a bit about that fractional. A conference. That's a great interview. I would encourage you to check out. So, Karina, what is the best way for our audience to contact you? LinkedIn. Find me on LinkedIn. Just message me and I will respond. And we will put uh, Karina's LinkedIn address into the show notes for both the video and the podcast. So, be sure to reach out to her there. Karina, I want to thank you for being a guest on our Fractionals Unplugged show. Be sure to subscribe to both our podcast on all the major platforms and on our YouTube channel for our videos. Until next time, make an impact on your clients and family on your terms, securing your independence with the freedom, flexibility, and control that you've earned.